Can you hear me now? Okay. Sitting there a few moments ago, I realized that I have actually called this place home longer than anywhere I've ever lived. Born in Canipa, Texas, moved from there for several years, moved back. But as far as time is concerned, I call this place home more than any place I've ever lived. I know that's true of Scott. <laughs> Ladies, you've gone to your favorite clothing store. You're looking for just the right dress. You've taken four of them back to the fitting room. You put one on out and your patient husband, who hasn't been saying a thing bad about it, is waiting for you to come out and you come out, you try it on and you say, how do I look? Hopefully out of those four you will find one that looks just right. How do I look? How does something look? How does it fit? What, what purpose is it going to serve? And there's an interesting passage. Go with me in your Bible, please, to Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 21. God has Paul to say, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. And so my question is, how does this look? How does this submission play out in life? What does it do? What's it good for? And as I studied this passage not too long ago, it dawned upon me that what follows is actually the description of how to be happy. Now, not many people look at submission as the way to be happy. But I want you to think about this context from the perspective of God is telling us how you can have the absolute happiest life on this earth. And the key that he gives of all things is submission. Submission. Hupotasso, the, the act of putting ourselves under. It is not the act of someone else forcing us under. It is the act of our choosing to put ourselves under. And in that lies genuine happiness. I've I've, I was about to do a wedding ceremony for a couple many years ago when I was working in Fort Worth at Westbury and the couple wanted to be married and I said, now there's one passage that I always include in my wedding ceremony and it's this passage. And they said, we don't want it. I said, well, I don't do weddings that doesn't have it. And they finally reluctantly agreed to allow me to read this passage in their wedding ceremony. I have to confess, I really didn't understand at that time that God was actually telling, here's husband, how you can be a happy husband. And here wife is how you can be a happy wife. Here is the key to happiness in the home. Listen to it. He's obviously going to be talking about Christ in the church, and if you want to get right down to it, here's how to be a happy church, is submitting to Christ. But listen as we read together, and go with me, because we're going to spend a good bit of time in the text itself. Chapter 5, verse 22. Wives, submit to your husbands as to the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church, his body, of which he is the Savior. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husbands in everything. A wife who is willing to seek to have the same relationship with her husband that this church 
seeks to have with Christ is setting herself up to be a happy wife. And yet so many women who read this passage do not see this as the key to happiness. They see it as the key to slavery. They miss God's point altogether. You see, if I see it as, as slavery, then I'm going to have to keep score on my husband. I'm going to have to keep a record of how good he's been to me. I'm going to have to keep an account of how bad he's been to me. And every time we have an argument, I'm going to have to remember all the bad things so I can bring them all up and tell him how bad he has been. And that's what they see this as. They do not see it as the means of how to be a happily married woman and the husband. It has been so interesting in premarital counseling how the husband smiled during this first part, girls. See, honey, I told you. I told you. How can a husband be happy in the home? How can he have the most fulfilling life as a husband? And here it is. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. There's a lot of husbands, if they would actually accept what God has had to say, could have a happily arranged marriage. They could enjoy it. But sometimes men are so busy being, pardon the expression that comes out of Southwest Texas, the bullhead of the house, that they're having to watch their wife and they're making it their business to make sure she adequately submits to his authority. And rather than giving himself up wherein he will find a deep kind of joy, he settles for the surface joy of being the king of the mountain rather than the servant on the mountain. And so what God is actually giving to people is the, the key to happiness. And so many people don't see it that way. They see it as the key to slavery. Listen as he continues. Verse 26, to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word and to the to present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish. Obviously, he's mixing up the metaphor of husband, wife, Christ, and the church. But do you think Jesus loves this church? How much do you think he loves it? Then that's how you husbands can be happy by the way you love your wives. You love your wife like Jesus loves this church, and you're setting yourself up to be a happy husband. You don't have to keep score. You know what Jesus does with scores? When you ask him for forgiveness, the score's gone. It's gone. You don't have to keep record of wrongs. You don't have to remember grudges. You don't have to harbor hatred. You forgive. You love as Christ loved the church. In the same way, husbands, I'm in verse 28, in the same way husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. After all, no one ever hated his own body, but he feeds and cares for it, just as Christ does the church. For, this, for we are members of his body. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will be one flesh. This is a profound mystery. And he says, I'm talking about Christ and the church. However, each one of you also must love his wife as he loves himself, and the wife must respect her husbands. This is how 
a wife can be happy. This is how a husband can be happy. No grudges kept, no bitterness stored, no garbage bag of wrongdoings always kept in reserve in case of emergency to be dumped out on one's mate. Submission, how to be happy. Children, you're next. Here's how you can be a happy child. And it doesn't make any difference if you're two or 20. Here's how you can be a happy child. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Yes, but, but, and wait a minute. God wants you to be happy in your home. He wants you to enjoy being reared by your parents. Obey them. Oh, that's not what makes me happy. I'll tell you this. If you want to be happy all your life, the principles of submission that you learn as a child will work in marriage. It'll work on the job. It'll work in a whole lot of places where belligerence fails. I have never seen a happy, rebellious child. Have you? Have you ever gone to a restaurant and watched a family with three obnoxious children? Nobody's happy. Nobody's happy. See if I ever bring you to this place again. Have you ever been back to that same restaurant and have seen a family with three children, the children behave, mother and daddy converse, and I embarrass them. I have often gone over and said to the parents, I really appreciate the way your children are behaving. I've had some interesting reactions. You don't see them all the time. It's one reaction. Another reaction is, it's not easy. Nobody said it would be easy. I want you to notice that the scripture read for your hearing and the song that was led just before I got up here was about the Christian armor. Did you know that God chose to place the description of the Christian armor after he's talked about submitting? Because submitting isn't going to be easy. Sometimes it's going to be a battle royal within yourself. To submit as God has said, here's what's going to make you happy. And sometimes we can't see how it's going to make us happy. Children, obey your parents and the Lord for this is right. Do we understand that's not God saying, I want you to be the most miserable people in the world. I want you to hate your parents because you have to submit to them. No. We need to wise up and accept the fact that the happiest homes are the homes where the children obey their parents and, next verse, honor your father and mother. First commandment with the promise, so that it may be well with you and that you may enjoy a long life on the earth. I don't know if you guys and gals can believe that or not, but that's God's truth. Think about it. Obey your parents, honor your father and mother. Now parents, he talks to you. Fathers, do not exasperate your children Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. Dad, your job, Mom, your job is a whole lot more, Mom, than cooking meals or going to work. And Dad, your job's a whole lot more than bringing home a paycheck. 
You're not only to teach your children about the Lord, you're to train them in the Lord. Not going to ask for a show of hands, but how many of you young people have been taken by your parents to see an elderly person? How many of you have gone with your parents to a home Bible study? How many of you have had your dad sit down and say, I want to teach you how to pray? You see, parents, the way you can be the happiest dad is to instruct your children in the knowledge of God and train them. May I use an abbreviation? OJT, know what that is? Most of you do. On the job training. That's how you learn. I'm going to show you, child of mine, because I love you, how to be a Christian man. I'm going to show you, child of mine, how to be a Christian woman. I'm going to show you what a Christian husband looks like. I'm going to show you what a Christian wife looks like. I'm giving to you the keys of happiness. I do realize sometimes it comes down to it just because I said so, but may that be among the last resorts. Go with me. Let me show you how. That's how to be a happy father, happy mother. I'm going to show you how. Slaves. Now some of you call yourself that in relationship to your employer. It may be that if you're an employer, you may see yourself in the role of master but I want you to go back, first of all, in your mind and assume, can you do this? That you are either a master or a slave and you're sitting in this audience and for the very first time, this epistle is being read to you. Well, you can nod in agreement about the husband-wife thing. You can surely nod in agreement about the parent-child thing. And then he says, Slaves, obey your masters with respect and fear and sincerity of heart just as you would obey Christ. Did you know what he just gave them? He gave them the key on how to be a happy slave. A happy slave. How can slaves be happy? What right do they have to be happy? Somebody else owns and controls them. Somebody else tells them when to get up and when to go to bed. How can you be happy when somebody else is running your life? Because as a Christian, you know that the only person running your life really is Jesus Christ. He's running your life. And when you work for this person, when you slave for this person, when you go to your job, go to it as if the big boss was Jesus Christ because he is. How many people hate to go to work? because they don't go to work as if they're going to serve Jesus Christ. I hate my job, hate my boss. Then rethink it. If you want to be happy on the job in spite of, then look at your job as if you're working for Christ. Listen to the text as we go further. Just as you would obey Christ, verse 6, obey them not only to win their favor when their eye is on you, but like slaves of Christ, doing the will of God from your heart. Serve wholeheartedly as if you were serving the Lord, not men, because you know that the Lord will, will reward everyone for whatever good he does, whether he's a slave or free. First job, McDonald's.
pay is not much, floor is greasy, and not all the customers are nice. Can't wait to get out of here. Go to work at McDonald's as if Jesus were your boss, because He is. He bought you, and He paid for you, and He owns you, and He's building a house for you in heaven. Masters, bosses, how can you be a happy boss? Treat your slaves in the same way. Do not threaten them since you know that he who is both their master and yours is in heaven and there is no favoritism with him. I've imagined in my mind since working on this lesson that there's two of you in the audience. One is a master, the other is a slave that you look at each other and you say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I've not been serving you as if I'm serving Christ. I've not been a master to you as an equal in the eyes of God. I'm sorry. You want to be a happy employee? You want to be a happy supervisor, boss? That's what he's telling us, how to be. But it's not going to be easy. Because the very next thing he says is, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's scheme. The devil does not want you to be happy in Christ. He wants you to be miserable in Christ looking for ways and excuses to get out. If I can just find one hypocrite, then I can quit the church. If I can find one elder who mistreats me, I can quit the church. If I can just find one member who says something bad about me, if I can just go to the hospital one time and nobody visit me from the church, then that's all I need to quit. And there are people who live that way. There are people who live that way all their lives, watching, not for opportunities to serve, but watching for some kind of mistreatment, some kind of failure, some kind of excuse. Are these people happy? Not at all. Not at all. We play dominoes with my mother-in-law nearly every night. She lives with us now most of the time. Grandma's 90, and some of you will remember Grandma Doris. Confined to a wheelchair, she'll ask us, I have no idea how many times a day because I'm at the office, Kay's at home. Is today Sunday? Get tired of answering that. But we have a record book. But it's of how many games of dominoes we played. You know those little small spiral notebooks? We're, we're starting on our third one, front and back of each page. X, 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 X. Happiness. The road to happiness is not going to be an easy one. And that's why you need the armor. And sometimes you're going to need it very, very much because husbands and wives do not always behave in ways that make submitting to them a delight. Sometimes they will behave in ways that will simply infuriate you and that's when you need the armor. As I've looked out over this audience this morning, only quickly and briefly I've seen a lot of hearts that have been broken since I left. I'm sorry. But if you will keep Christ as your master, 
you not only will survive, but you will refuse to allow, to allow whatever happened steal the joy that Jesus Christ died to give you. If you're harboring resentment against a mate, against a parent, against a child, against an employee or an employer, all you're doing is allowing the devil to rob you of the joy that you want and should have in Christ Jesus. But it's not easy. You can tell by the armor that they're not going to scuffle. It's going to be a war. It's going to be a battle. It's not going to be easy. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's scheme. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood. Parents, mates, bosses, employees, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after having done everything, stand firm. When the dust is settled and the battle is over, guess who's standing? It's those who've been submissive in the Spirit of God of Christ. That's who's still standing. They may be battered and bruised, but there is a smile in their heart even if there's not one on their face. They're standing. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. God wants you to be happy. And all you have to do is watch popular television shows and they can teach you how to be unhappy. And they can do it well. All in the guise of your rights. That's a lesson. We're going to stand and sing a hymn of invitation because there may be someone in this audience. I, I can hardly imagine that there is not someone in this audience who needs to be baptized into Christ today. How can we have this many people together coming to be drawn closer to God and there's no one who needs to be baptized into Christ? Surely there well, it may be you. And it's very, very hard for me to imagine that there's not someone in this audience today who needs to come back home to the Lord. If you knew you were going to die this afternoon, could you say, it'd be all right. That's what God wants for you. You see, that's the ultimate happiness, to be able to say, it'd be all right. If you need the prayers of this congregation, it would be their privilege to pray on your behalf. Does your heart need to respond as we stand and sing?